Hello guys and welcome back. My name is Abias Atakisha Oktora and this is the fifth video on my series about the class Wireless Communication and Convergence Network. This video will summarize the contents of the fifth week's lecture which is titled Signal Propagation and Path Loss Model. So let's go straight to my summary for the lecture. So first, we are going to talk about the X and RX signal. So how a signal is propagated and it's and is how a signal is transmitted and then received. I'm just going to explain this very briefly by drawing, I guess. I mean, uh, writing on the slide. So first, the signal that you want to be transmitted is going to take the form of a binary binary in binary form the signal that you want to send and then uh, this binary signal is going to be converted into analog sorry if my writing is a bit iffy uh, using what's called a digital modulation digital Okay, that's worse. Uh, digital modulation. Modulation. Okay, and from here, by in in the form of a uh, in a two point four gigahertz frequency. That oh wait. I need to write it a bit better. Oh, whoops. Okay, so with a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz, it is going to be it is going to be sent. I mean, it's going to be transmitted by using an an antenna a TX antenna and sending it over the channel sorry <laughs> the writing is so bad uh, from the TX antenna through the channel to the destination which is the RX receiver or antenna I guess this is also the this is both of these are antennas but one is the transmitter the second is the receiver and then it's going to it's going to go through the same uh, the same process as when we send the signal but backwards so from analog we received it and then we use digital modulation to turn it into binary and that is how the signal goes from A from A to B. With that out of the way, now we are going to start to talk about propagation characteristics. So there are three main propagation characteristics that I'm going to talk about here. The first is path loss, the second is shadowing, and the third is multipath fading. So let's talk about the first one. So path loss. So it is the reduction in power density or attenuation of an electromagnetic wave as it propagates through space. So it's basically when a signal loses its strength while it's moving through space. And we're just going to go straight to the second one uh, because the first one is quite rather simple. The second and third one is they're they're similar, but they're a bit more complex, uh, a bit more complex. So the second is shadowing. So shadowing is a type of fading that is caused by obstacles that affected the wave's propagation. So what is fading? So fading is a variation of the attenuation for a certain signal with various variables. 
These variables include time, geographical position, and radio frequency. Fading is uh, usually modeled as a random process. A fading channel is a communication channel that experiences fading. This also connects to number three, the third one, because it is also a type of fading. It's called multipath, multipath fading. So it is a propagation phenomenon that results in radio signals reaching the receiving antenna by two or more paths. So this causes the signal to smash into each other and more often than not they are going to weaken each, each other signals so that the antenna cannot receive uh, any signal. So it is usually caused uh, by atmospheric ducting, ionoso ionospheric reflection and refraction, and also reflection from water bodies and terrestrial objects such as mountains and buildings. With propagation characteristics done, now we are going to move on to the next part which is going to talk about the different types of path loss modeling. So the first is Maxwell's equations, the second is free space and two path models, the third is ray tracing models, fourth is single slope path loss exponent models, and the fifth is measurement based and standards models. So Maxwell's equation is thought of as complex and impractical. So we're going to jump over that, we're going to talk about free space model or line of sight model in which both the transmitter and the receiver is in each other's line of sight so it is a path loss for an unobstructed line of sight path so there is no obstacles blocking the signal i mean the line of sight from the transmitter to the receiver the power falls off proportional to 1 over d times to the power of 2 and it's also proportional to lambda times to the power of 2 now, next up, two-ray model, which is very similar to the free to the the first one, which is the free space model, but the difference is there is another path for ground or reflected signals or ground bounds, as it says. The ground bounds approximately cancels out the line of sight path if it's above the critical distance so above a certain threshold of distance the line of sight path and the bounce ground bounce path will cancel each other out the power fall the power falls off is proportional to small d times to the power of 2 it is proportional to large d to the power of 4 and it is independent from lambda next up we have general ray tracing in which models signal components as particles. So there are three different effects that these particles can have on the signal. The first is reflections, the second is scattering, and the third is diffraction. So as you can see here with the colors here, the red is reflection, the second is scattering, the third is diffraction. So diffraction is more like uh, something that is see-through and it just bends the light directly to the uh, receiver. For reflection, it is just bouncing, the signal is bouncing over solid objects, I, I, I mean from objects. And the last one is scattering in which the signal hits an object and it just, because of the uneven surface, it just scatters the signal everywhere. But not uh, every, but not all the signal is going to go to the transmitter, so it's going to be noticeably weaker. So usually these types of uh, models are dominated by reflections, and it requires side geometry and dielectric properties. It is also considered to be easier than Maxwell because it's geom it's a geometry versus differential equations, and computer packages are often used to test out general ray tracing. With that done, now we are going to move on to simplified path loss model. 
it is used when path loss is dominated by reflection. For like, example, like from before, in general ray tracing, where it is usually dominated by reflection. So the equation itself is PR equals PT times K times DR divided by D uh, in, in braces multiplied by gamma, in which the value of gamma is between 2 and 8. 2 and 8 is also included. So the most important parameter is the path loss exponent gamma, which is determined empirically. Next up is we are going to talk about millimeter waves. So what is millimeter waves? I already explained it before in uh, another video, but I'm going to again briefly explain about it. So millimeter waves or extremely high frequency or EHF is the International Telecommunication Union designation for the band of radio frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum from 30 to 300 gigahertz. It lies between SHF, super high frequency band, and the far infrared band, the lower part of which is the terahertz band. So radio waves in this band have wavelengths from 10 to 1 millimeter. So it is also called the millimeter band and radiation in this band is called, you guessed it, millimeter waves. Sometimes abbreviated as WMW or millimeter wave, like, I, like what I wrote here, millimeter wave. So this slide here is an example of how a millimeter wave frequency allocation look like. So the example is the United States frequency allocations. So how to read this is from the left to the right, we have smaller frequency to larger frequencies. And from the top band to the lower band, it's going from small frequencies to uh, larger frequencies. So it's like, here to here, here to here, here to here, and so on and so forth. So, after briefly explaining about millimeter waves, we are going to very quickly move on and talk about millimeter wave propagation. So, millimeter wave propagation has a couple of interesting quirks. So I guess the first main one is that channel models are usually inaccurate based on uh, because based on measurements there are fe very few accurate analytical models and the second is path loss proportion to lambda times to the power of 2 so it is quite huge it is also affected by the type of uh, if there is if there are any types of particles on the air, for example, like oxy oxygen or rain, or rain that could absorb the wave itself, causing path loss. So with that briefly, also briefly explained, now I'm going to move on to empirical channel models. So here I have put in my slide a couple of different types of empirical channel models. We're going to, I'm going to briefly talk about each of them. The first is Okumura model. It is based empirically by using site or frequency specifics, and it uses graphs. Second is Hata model. I have no idea why I wrote it, why I wrote it as hate model. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Hata model, which is an, an analytical approximation to Okumura. The third is, it has a quite a unique name, it's cost 231 model. It extends Hata model to a higher frequency, uh, to up to 2 gigahertz. Fourth is a multi-slope model. Uh, it's literally in the name. It's a model for multi-slope empirical channels. The fifth is Wolfish or Bertoni model. It extends the cost 231 model to include diffractions. The last two is a bit more, I guess, complex, you can say, for the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So current cellular models, LTE and 5G. So for LTE, it is detailed path loss models for UI and base stations 
for different multipath delay spreads, user speeds, and MIMO antenna correlations. The 5G model includes higher frequencies, so this is even more higher than before. So before we have like up to 2 gigahertz, right, for cost 231 model. Now it's up to 100 gigahertz. And the last one is Wi-Fi channel models, TGN and TGAC. So indoor and outdoor path loss models with MIMO, 40 megahertz channels, and different multipath delay spreads. For TGAC, the MIMO is four times four and greater, and the 14 millihertz channel also in also include a greater frequency range. So with that done, now we are going to go and talk about the main points of the lecture. So the pet loss model simplify Maxwell's equation. So first it was complicated. Now with the pet loss models, it is much more simpler to understand and also to use. The second is the models vary in complexity and accuracy. Third is power fall off with distance. It pro is proportional to d th to the power of two in free space and d to the power of four in two path model. The fourth is the main characteristics of path loss captured in single slope exponent model is as the equation that I've already shown you guys in the simplified path loss model, which is PR equals PT times K times DR divided by D in braces multiplied to the power of gamma, in which the value of gamma is between 2 and 8, including 2 and 8 too. And millimeter wave propagation models are still inaccurate, with path loss being large due to frequency, rain, and oxygen. That is all for this week, guys. Uh, I want to say sorry if I made any mistakes. And thank you for your attention. See you in next week's video. Bye-bye.